Pop Squat. Boom! And at you. Hey everybody, it's Sunday afternoon, uh, about 4 o'clock. And I am going to go play some games later at a friend's house, so I need to do these videos earlier today, and hopefully I will have enough time to do a couple of things, and we'll see how it goes. Uh, this is kind of fun, because this is the first video that I'm going to react to that a somebody from Patreon, so a patron, has uh, asked for, and in fact, uh, he is going to get two songs today, because he asked for two things, one of which I was already going to do, and that will probably be the next video I do. Uh, so, uh, I'm not going to give out a name, but his name starts with an E, and he is the only patron to have made uh, any suggestions in the Discord. So, let's, uh, let's jump into this. This is Lil Peep. I just can't seem to get away from the word Lil, uh, and the song is Live Forever. Uh, let's see here, Live Forever is the third mixtape, uh, so that's the album itself. Uh, we're doing the specific song off of it called Live Forever. By American singer, songwriter, rapper, or singer, rapper Lil Peep. It was released in 2015. It was released two months after his first mixtape, Lil Peep Part 1 which released in 2015, September of 2015. Uh, the mixtape was preceded by four singles, Flannel, Angel Dust, Haunt You, and Live Forever, uh, Live Forever and Nuts. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. That is five singles, not four. So Wikipedia, get, get updated. Um, let's take a look at Lil Peep himself. Hmm, interesting looking guy. Facial tattoos. I like. I would do scarification. I say that. Maybe I would do it. It's the thing I think looks coolest. But a facial tattoo, maybe not. Uh, but let's see. Oh shit! He died too. What the hell? Gustav Elijah R. R. I don't know how to pronounce that. But it looks like he was born in '96 and died in 2017. Uh, known professionally as Little Peep. Uh, was a Swedish American rapper, singer, and songwriter. He was a member of the emo rap collective Gothboy Clique, uh, Clique probably, helping pioneer an emo revival style of rap and rock music. Okay, sounds cool. Lil Peep has been credited as a leading figure of the uh, mid-late 2010s emo rap scene and came to be an inspiration to outcasts and youth subculture cultures. Uh, born in Allentown, Pennsylvania, to an American mother and a Swedish father, and raised on Long, I Long Island. R, A H R. I don't know. R is what I would pronounce it, but it has uh, some. I don't know if they're umlauts or some other sort of <clears throat> uh, accent over the A, so I'm not sure exactly how it's pronounced. Uh, started releasing music on SoundCloud in 2013 under the name Trap Goose. Later changing his artist name to Lil Peep because his mother had called him Peep since he was a baby. Ah, that's so cute. He soon became popular on the platform with the release of the 2015 single Star Shopping, and his popularity grew further with the release of mixtapes Lil Peep Part 1 and Live Forever later that year. In 2016, Lil Peep released his widely acclaimed mixtape Crybaby, mixtapes Crybaby and Hellboy. Uh, I love all the comic references that everybody's got going on, along with many other projects, including California Girls and Vertigo. Also a comic reference in my mind, but it's probably not really. Um, Lil Peep's first performance, live performance, was in 2016 in Tucson. Uh, this is going to be a whole lot of information. I want to see what the hell happened to him. Why doesn't it? His death. 2017 was found dead on his tour bus when his manager went to check on him in preparation for that night's performance in the Tucson, Arizona venue. Foul play was not suspected, and his death was believed to be from an overdose. In a series of Instagram posts in the hours leading up to his death, Lil Peep claimed to have ingested psilocybin mushrooms and cannabis concentrate. Uh, in another, he claimed to have consumed six Xanax pills following a video depicting his attempts to drop an un unidentified pill into his mouth several times before successfully swallowing one and shaking a full prescription bottle. A subsequent post was captioned, When I die, you'll love me. <sighs> In the days after his death, a police report revealed that Lil Peep had taken a nap around 5.45 before the concert. His manager checked on him twice and found him sleeping and breathing fine, but was unable to wake him. 
When the manager checked on Lil Peep the third time, he was unresponsive and not breathing. Lil Peep's manager performed CPR before medics arrived, though he was pronounced dead at the scene. Wow, that, what a nightmare. Don't do that. And I know sometimes uh, when you're messing around with drugs, it's a mistake. I mean, people do all sorts of things that are not very smart when they're on drugs because consequences are meaningless. Um, but, man, just a shame. And, I mean, the fact that his name is Lil Peep and it's because his mom called him Peep and <laughs> just, I, it just makes it that much closer, right? Like, you just feel the connection there. And you know his mom is... I'm sure, just absolutely devastated, assuming she's still around. I have no idea. I, I hope, I, I kind of hope she is. I kind of hope she didn't have to live through the death of her child, because that's a nightmare and a half. Um, let's, uh, let's give this a listen. Uh, the person who recognized this, E, I will say, uh, said just basically that you should check out Live Forever by Lil Peep. And then he also had all sorts of nice things to say about uh, New Rocks by uh, Cemetery and Ghost Mound? Am I remembering that? Ghost Mountain, not Ghost Mound. Ghost Mountain. So I'm going to do that video after this. Uh, Lil Peep, Live Forever. Uh, 2 minutes 40 seconds and uh, I guess from about 2015. I don't think I have my speakers turned up enough, but we'll find out. Here we go. Very alternative sound to me. fits into the emo feel in general. I, I mean, really excellent. I'm trying to think of some of the groups that I think this sounds like. There's a little bit of The Cure, sort of, with sort of that uh, kind of ethereal... I can't even make the sound, obviously, because it's computer-generated, but the background sound that just sort of, like, whooshes a little bit. And uh, The Cure used that quite a lot in some of their music to... to kind of give it a more as atmos atmospheric atmospheric feel and um uh oh i also get a little bit of morphine out of this uh mark sandman's group um loved morphine um and it has a very sort of it's, it has a very similar feel to it and uh i just listened to a morphine song yesterday i think and man love those guys uh, yeah, this is really good, and, uh, the lyrics are, yeah, I missed a little bit in the beginning, but then I looked them up, um, yeah, he does some drugs, he's on the big screen, uh, what is this, is now I live forever, every time I hit the dope I have a new dream, good line, having visions of everybody who knew me see my face yeah there's no way that it is a surprise that this guy 
accidentally killed himself. I mean, just based on this one song and a few lyrics, he clearly had not necessarily suicidal thoughts, but he had... <laughs> he is what my friend, uh, my, my ex-girlfriend actually called, he was in the pre-contemplation phase of uh, suicide, and uh, which I find a very odd sort of term, because if you're not thinking about something, you're in the pre-contemplation phase of it, regardless. But I think it is specifically like somebody who is thinking about, is, is this what I want to do? Do I want to live? Do I want to be here? And it sounds like he kind of was not happy with life. Certainly trying to... I don't know. I don't want to say he was trying to disassociate with drugs. Um, but I, I th if he had negative feelings, he may have been trying to not feel those things by doing drugs and to just sort of like not have to worry about that and then that has leads to its own problems and wow yeah super super heavy stuff but it's a beautiful song i mean it's it really is a lovely lovely <laughs> it's a beautiful song i won't say lovely um and i like it it like i said it sounds like some really good emo rap rock stuff that I would totally listen to. In my face on the motherfucking big screen Left foot out the bitch is smoking on a HD Knock, knock, bitch, I'm kicking in the front door Left foot out, we'll get the motherfucking bus roll Now I pull up and I get it how I want, whoa Now I pull up, not on purpose, and I start, whoa I got problems with your motherfucking God Great song. I, I mean, I could, I could give this song to just a ton of people I know who will never hear this otherwise, and they would absolutely love it. Like people who are my age, who were into the whole emo thing or goth thing, and and they would love this song. It's so. It's not ominous. It's not spooky. It just really conveys sort of that just the strong emo feel that so many songs have and it's a really good song and I can see why he was really going places and man you know just cause you have like fucked up things in your past use that as fuel for being creative but try not to do more messed up things in the future like I know there's this whole like mystique around, and, and this is this is totally just me talking. You can totally ignore me. Um, I was always one of those people who could look at somebody else and go, "I do not want to do that. Like uh, that will kill me. I understand that, and or it won't turn out well for me. Whatever, whatever that thing is, and um, which is one reason why I never really drank. I never really did drugs. I mean, I've had like. THC CBD drinks uh, I've that's about I've had alcohol a lot of alcohol especially over the last five six years or you know when I was drinking but it's um, and I was even afraid to start drinking because my al my uncle was alcoholic and I thought I was gonna be alcoholic and I, I wasn't until I had really bad stress um, but it's it's just God you don't have to keep making really bad choices even though you feel like you have to because you just feel like shit and you've got all the stuff in your past that weighs down on you and makes you feel awful and makes you feel like holy crap I just need a break from this I just want to 
take a drink or I just want to get stoned or I just want to get high on whatever it is that you get high on, especially when you're talking about any drug that slows down your heart. Don't mess with that stuff. Your heart can beat super fast. Super, 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 super fast. Like, ridiculously fast. Your heart cannot beat super slow. Slow drugs will kill you. Um, they're awful. They're awful. Because your heart just stops beating. And, and it doesn't recover from that. Um, fast beating, you're okay. I mean, you're not really okay if you're on a lot of drugs and your heart's going crazy. But um, the, the chances of, of something that makes your heart beat faster killing you is a lot less than something that makes your heart beat slower. Um, God, yeah, I, I really want to hear more by this guy. Um, and I mean, the fact that he ended up dying, whether it was a non-purpose suicide or an accidental death, uh, just makes the music that much more significant to me because I know the guy was obviously going through some stuff and he, couldn't handle it or didn't have the tools to handle it or didn't have the support to handle it or didn't have people around him watching out for him who knew how he really felt about life and things and himself and I mean even just this one song I can I can tell he was not not doing good and oh man rough and the thing is it's a good song and it's called live forever which yes is completely ironic and yet because of what he went through and the fact that he put this music out in some ways he is going to live forever people are going to remember him and remember his music and he's going to influence people down the line who are making music today and next year and five years and ten years and and it's i mean that's that's a good thing at least but it'd be better if he were around and maybe able to kind of pull out of that I don't know. I can't even really say it's a nosedive because I don't know if it was an on-purpose suicide or an accidental one. And just, just, yeah, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. I know that sounds so stupid to say, but like I said, it takes effort to kill yourself. In this case, I think it may have been a mistake, but the end result is the same, which sucks. Uh, I will absolutely listen to more Lil Peep. Um, Feel free to send me some stuff. I have so many songs already. Don't worry about <laughs> when, when I'll get around to it, because I don't know. Uh, there you go, Pop Squad. <laughs> Checking out. Please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, like I said, this was the first song from somebody who signed up on Patreon and signed up, I think, at the $10 level because they got the, the Discord invite. Um, I, I actually did not expect very many people to sign up at the $10 level, so I'm happy that he did and he took advantage of it. And if you want to convert back to the $2 level now that I'm playing some of your songs, go right ahead. I, I mean, whatever. And we can talk in Discord. It doesn't make any difference to me. Uh, thanks very much. Talk to you soon. I'll be doing some more videos. Bye-bye.